Train generators separate big game engines such as Unreal and Unity from the rest of the pack such as Construct. Train generation just sadly isn't possible inside the Construct engine. Or is it? So in order to achieve this, first thing that we've got here is just a basic sprite. I'm going to right click and go down to the mesh option and create a mesh. Now meshes you can make any size you want. For this quick demo I'm just going to make it 10 by 10 and just press OK. And what we get is we get these points that you can take and you can drag out individually. Now on its own you can do some really useful stuff with this. It's a little bit niche but if you're clever you can do some good stuff with this. But what we're going to abuse of this is the fact that you can click on any point and you can actually increase its Z elevation. So we can take this up by 50. Now it's a little bit hard to see on a 2D environment, so we will need a 3D camera to get this working, but we can just take each individual point and we can raise them up, creating the illusion of mountains. Now we want to be able to do this in real time. So we want to be able to get this work with the mouse. So how does this work? Well, the first thing that we need to do is actually create two variables for the column and the row. You see that our mesh here is divided into squares, and what we can do is we can actually take each individual row and column to keep track of each individual square. So this mesh position you'll see is at 1, 1. And if we click somewhere else, this one is at 5, 6. This is really, really useful. So what we're going to do is when you press the left click, we're going to set the row first. Now we're actually going to take the mouse's Y position. And then we're going to divide it by the terrain height. Now terrain height is basically just the layout height, the size of that image and then we times it by mesh rows and round it. This is just a really quick calculation to work out the row position of the square that we're closest to. We can also do the same to get the column, this time using mouse X. Next we use this code here to set the mesh point. So what we're going to do is set the column and the row using our two calculations that worked out already. We use the relative mode. This just means when we're talking about the different positions of X, Y, and Z, we're moving it from its current point instead of moving it to the coordinate zero, zero. Then we get to our first obstacle, the Z elevation. You cannot get the current value of the Z elevation for a certain image point. You can't get much information about any of the image points. So we can change this to one to make it higher, but what we want is more control to be able to create bigger mountains or ditches. So how do we solve this problem? What we're actually gonna do is create an array that holds every single image point's Z axis. And then what we're going to do is increase that by 10 when you click on a certain one, or in this case, when you're holding down the left click, allows for a bit more easy control. And then we can take that value and put it back into our image point or set mesh point and increase it by the new array's position. Our next issue that we've got is actually creating ditches. I've got my Z elevation here. And if I set this to a minus number, it defaults back to zero. You cannot go past zero which means creating ditches is impossible, right? Well, not entirely. On start of layout, we're gonna take our array and set it to the size of our mesh rows and columns, so how big our grid is. We're then gonna repeat that many times using a nested loop. So one loop goes for the number of rows, the other one goes for the number of columns, and this means you tackle every single square. In this case, we're doing 10 by 10, 100 squares. In my bigger example, we'll look at a bit later, we've got 400,000 squares. And all we're going to do is set all of the columns and rows to 100. We're going to lift the whole thing up and because all the points have been raised to 100, we'll end up with a flat image still that we can raise terrain on, but now we could also lower. And then we just set the right click to do the opposite of what we just did before. So instead of adding 10 to our array, be minus 10. Finally, you put this in 3D using a 3D camera and add some basic controls in order to zoom in and out and rotate around the canvas. And then we're ready to do our first test. So I can take my mouse, and I can start drawing across and adding mountains in. I can do the same on this purple side as well. And we could also add a ditch or a crater. So we need to go around a few times just to make this a really, really clear ditch. And again, this is just using the left click and the right click. All the other controls can be found on the screen. And obviously this will be available in the description. And then obviously we want to see this in a bit more depth. We can zoom down on the image and we can have a look a bit closer at our ditch that we've created, our mountains we've created in the distance, we've got more mountains behind us, 
And we can also start creating more terrain in this mode here and start seeing our mountains come to life. Now the mouse is not completely accurate when you're working with the 3D camera, so it's slightly off, but what we've got is a really bare bones terrain generator. So what's the drawbacks? Drawback number one, none of this has work and collision. There's no way to work out this collision either. So why you can make some really great looking terrain with this, you wouldn't be able to get a player to walk around this sort of map. Problem number two is to do with colors. You'll notice that I'm using a very colorful terrain and that's so you can see everything on it really easily. There's no way to set the colors. You'll see a lot of yellows being featured on the peaks that I'm added. This gets taken the top left value on what to do for most of these meshes that we're creating. By flipping to a green canvas instead and drawing on, you can see some of the mountains form, especially if I hold down, but we can't see any of the detail. So this just looks like an empty map with the odd spikes when you're looking at the right angle. This makes it really, really difficult to not only see your land, but to also make it and add that extra detail. What I'd love to see from this a step further is being able to change the color at certain heights. So when you're really low, you could add water. When you started to build a gradient, you could add some dirt to it. And then finally, when you're really high up, you could add snowy peaks to create some really great landscapes. But at the moment, you can only deform the image that's currently on the screen. Final issue that we've got is there's no way to save this. You cannot create your terrain using a tool like mine and then save it and then use that mesh in your game. You have to manually set the mesh inside the engine, which takes a long time to do because again, there's no tools to do this for you. What I'd love to see from Construct is loads of features around this mesh, but the one I'd love to see most is being able to save a mesh in a game as a JSON file. So you could create your terrain using a tool like this, export it, and then you can make maybe like a racetrack example they've got currently on Construct or the Archer example that uses meshes and use it as a background scenery prop. But that's it for today. Terrain Gen is a long way away from Construct. It might be something that doesn't ever come into Construct. Again, Construct is a 2D engine with 3D possibilities. It's not a 3D engine, but this is still fun to play around with. Let me know what you think. Check out in the description and I'll see you in the next video.